Mongoose Magic Moments, the Tsabokalodi Yellow Mongoose Group. Hello out there, Mongoose Conservation friends. It's the 28th of June, 2022. About two hours to go before sunset, and I'm currently visiting the Tsabokalodi Yellow Mongoose Group who are foraging. Bit of food aggression there from the dominant female Tsabokalodi towards her daughter, Kiabonga. Further away at the sleeping burrow, is Saubona, the dominant male. There was a recent predator scare which has brought them to the burrow ahead of time. A quick shout out to Julia. Yellow mongoose friend. No sign of lactation or pregnancy at this stage. It's starting to get very, very cold as we're moving into July. There's been snow on the Great Black Mountain Range to the north twice already. And fairly recent rainfall, so the area is looking very lush and green with lots of succulent flowers coming out. You can hear lots of bird life pre-sunset, the roosting sounds. Over here, porcupine has been digging into the embankment here. There's also been a lot of digging from the ant bear recently in the area. I'm wearing heavy jackets because I'm used to temperatures of over 40 degrees centigrade. So when it drops down to 16 or 17, that's freezing for me. There's a bit of auto grooming over there from the dominant female Tsabokalodi. For those who haven't seen my previous videos, Mongoose Magic Moments, this is filmed here in the Meerkat Magic Valley Reserve. It's a private reserve that I own. The area has been cordoned off from livestock that occasionally visit the area, as I've mentioned in past videos. The Katunguru cattle come visit here every few months. There's a lot of digging that's been happening here, relay digging, basically like meerkats kicking sand out from one area to the next. Looks almost like they're slalom skiing. Dominant female is being very alert. There's a lot of pre-sunset sounds happening at the moment. And they're all part of what I like to call, again, the neighborhood watch. Any sound could trigger an alarm. Very quickly, animals will react to it who are part of the neighborhood. And in the distance, I can hear Corvus capensis. It's a crow. Although it's not a predator to the mongooses, it can prey on small birds in the area. And if there are pale chanting goshawks in the area, this results in a different call from the crow, which can basically indicate an alarm for a predator approaching. And then the yellow mongooses will be even more alert. They are being quite cautious because the crow is not a regular visitor to this area. So the sound has made them a bit more wary. They're also watching me to make sure I'm not the threat. I have to be very careful that they do not associate me with any potential predator scares in the area. And that's why I'm not making my usual reassurance sounds. I'm just standing very quietly here as far as the other sounds I usually make which I only make in the absence of predators. Otherwise, they could be associated with predators. All right, currently three individuals within the group staying close together. The ground is still very wet after the recent rainfall of 16. That's one six millimeters of rainfall. That's a very large amount of rainfall to receive in a day in this area. 
which is a semi-desert ecosystem. Again, some Okolodis investigating the burrow areas before anybody goes to sleep. All right, the crow has stopped calling now. They're noticeably more relaxed. They're not guarding anymore. I see Giabonga is still being quite alert, but she's not standing up on her hind legs anymore. And it looks like the dominant male Salborna has moved to the other side of the burrow where I can see him beneath that tree there. All right, that's very good. It's a bit of an auto groom going on there. A sure sign of being more relaxed. And then also here by Tsuboko Lodi, although she's still being very alert. Her posture has changed completely, as you can see. She's sitting down, grooming. I have made videos on this in the past, but I'll mention it again for any who haven't seen them. I cordoned this area of the burrow off from livestock many years ago, and I mentioned this briefly. The reason is livestock are not familiar with burrow systems because they domesticated animals and they'll come into the area and they can trample these ancient burrow systems, which could be dozens of years old or even hundreds of years old. And that basically can result in destruction of an entire wildlife ecology. Antelope and other indigenous creatures in the area are not stopped from moving through these strings that I've put up here, but they act as a deterrent to domestic stock who treat them as if they were electrified, even though they are not. Because the association to them is electric fences are strand-like and they will stay away from them. And that has protected this system for many, many years. I have been following this mongoose group family since 2008 and watch many generations come and go many of them have actually left to start their own families elsewhere and this is the main group of mongooses that live on the reserve they're fully contained within the reserve boundaries which is very unusual in fact most mongooses and meerkats that i study live on multiple properties and fences are not boundaries to them. Again, wildlife will come and go. They'll go under through and over. Most uh, fences in the area are not even a slight deterrent to wildlife. And that's why I call them the true wild animals in an area. They are not like game farm animals that have been brought into an area and basically contained. They can come and go as they choose. So they are self-regulating natural game. And meerkats and mongooses, porcupine, ant bear and various others, odd wolf, battered foxes, cape foxes, black-backed jackals, and the list can go on and on and on. Most of these animals are fossorial, so they are already digging animals and they can easily go under fences by making holes beneath them. So many game farms actually implement rocks along their boundaries, which I'm absolutely against because that also stops non-fossorial animals such as tortoises from easily getting from one property to the next and breaks their territorial migration. It's unnecessary and is in fact not good for bringing in wildlife corridors from one property to the next. This property has had all of its internal fences removed by me over the last decade. It's taken a very long time because it was full of camp fences with what is known as jackal proofing. Basically the larger version of chicken mesh. I stripped all of that away and gave it away. So now we just have the boundary fences in the area which have lots and lots of holes beneath them which I leave open for wildlife. So that was just a brief explanation about this particular strand fence and why it's here. As you can see by these two 
the dominant female closest here and her daughter Giabonga. They are much more relaxed from when I started showing you this particular snapshot into their lives earlier. And that's due to the crow having left the area now. There are lots of Cape Sparrows that I can hear in the background. That's them right now, flying overhead. Passa Mahali and Passa Domesticus. The reason I use scientific names occasionally is because there are 11 official languages in South Africa alone, which means there are a multitude of common names and many of them are very confusing and misleading. Some of them are even the same name given to different species. So for anybody out there who watches this, the scientific names are aimed directly at you because you can Google them at any time to find out exactly which species I'm referring to without any issues there. One scientific name per species around the planet. And please remember everybody out there who may watch this, mongooses are incredibly important in ecology. They often control rodent swarms which could be eating various crops. And of course, they will control pretty much everything that meerkats eat, various vertebrates and invertebrates. However, unlike the meerkats, the yellow mongoose here, Synectus penicillata, this particular species, will in fact also hunt birds and mice effectively. I hope everyone has a fantastic evening ahead. Stay safe and remember, Mongooses are our friends.